Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Annika Quinn. I'm editorial director of Western Living and Vancouver magazines. And I'm so happy to be here with you today, Jamie, to talk about Herschel and the role that design had um, in its success and the innovation that you guys have demonstrated. Thanks. We're going to have a number of slides that are running through here, which we might stop and point to every Perfect. once in a while. Um, yeah, it's really just past, present, future, of okay. kind of starting the brand right through to today. So. Yeah. So um, why don't we start with where the heck Herschel is? <laughs> where the heck Herschel is? So Herschel is actually a small town in Canada. It's in uh, Saskatchewan. And right now today, I think it has about 30 residents. So <laughs> I know it's a hamlet. Um, the key thing for Herschel was for us, my great grandparents homesteaded there. My grandfather was born there. My father was born there. And so for so many trips and so much time, we traveled back there as kids. And, and, and some of the stories we have of playing out there, coming from the city and growing up in Alberta and going to a small little hamlet, you're free. And you're free to do anything you want. And mm -hmm. I think that's why we have some of the best memories from there. So when we sat down and focused on trying to start a brand, you know, and we started poking around at names, um, it got thrown out there, and it just resonated with both of us right off the bat. It felt right. It felt right to pay homage back to you know all the all the fun times we've had as kids, but also just as a family business to pay homage to, yeah. to that small hamlet. So family must have been thrilled too. I uh, they still are thrilled, and it's fun <laughs> to go back to you know speak to, uh, to 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 everyone in Herschel and walk through the museum and the church, and it's it's a fun place to to yeah. see. Uh, you know, it's, it's not what it once was, but it's still an exciting place for us. So. I expect Herschel Bags will have a little spot in the museum at some point. They, they do now. They do which, now. Uh, I mean, you guys, it's not a big museum. <laughs> it's a long trip here from Vancouver there or for yeah. most of you from around the globe. So um, it is a little bit off the beaten track, but okay. uh, it's a pretty fun spot. That's great. Uh, so um, how has design helped to build Herschel to the brand that it is today? Design for the brand, it's everything. And I think the biggest thing for me is we use design to solve problems. And the biggest problem we found 10 years ago was that backpacks were boring. And when I say backpacks are boring, they just didn't have a heartbeat. And we really felt we could go in and not only design the product better, but design the story better. And to, to build off that, it was, it was one of those things that for me, it's one of those wouldn't it be cool moments where it's not that Lynn and I were trained designers and knew exactly what we wanted, but we knew what was going to look different, feel different, and I think something the market needed to have. And there was, there was nothing out there that truly, I think, spoke to, uh, to our consumer and, and who we wanted to be and who we wanted it to be. And we wanted something that um, you could take along on your travels, that you could um, almost storytell along with. And that was one of the... You know, going back 11 years ago, that was really our goal, and it's still our goal today, is uh, really to be design-focused. And we almost started the company as a design company more than a product company. Hmm. Before we had any product, we did our first lookbook. Right. You know, we envisioned where we wanted to sell it, what we wanted it to look like, but we really wanted to put that story around it, and we thought that was missing. Hmm. And we were talking a little bit backstage before. You're in uh, 90 countries now. Just over 90 countries, Just over yes. 90 countries, which is amazing. But that design story changes according to market, too, right? It's not a Herschel bag here. It's not necessarily a Herschel bag in Korea or in Paris. Or It, it does change. As yeah. you get larger and larger and enter more territories and more countries, they all have specific needs. And that's one thing after diving really in. And, and it was our goal when we set Herschel up. We didn't want to be small. We wanted to be scalable. We were really inspired by some of the, uh, the classic footwear brands out there, a Converse even a Vans, to really watch how these guys can be commercial, but still really great design and wearable. You can dress it up, dress it down. So our whole thing was going global right off the bat. We opened with selling, this is 10 years ago, we sold into six countries our first season and just started expanding from there. And the more we learned is that we have to design specific, if that's prints or, or seasonal colorways or collaborations or even silhouettes and scale, four territories. So, mm -hmm. you know, APAC region slightly different than where a Europe is compared to North America, where Europe is a little bit more kind of nod to the past and still is really feeling heritage. And, and, and it's there where you go to APAC and, you know, they really do jump on a trend early and set a lot of trends in. And, um, you know, it feeds into North America, which is always uh, exciting and changing mm -hmm. quickly too. So. 
do you see that trickle back here when you said that they're ahead on trends and they're sort of, is that the kind of thing that it's almost a test for you as well, that we're always a little bit behind, so you get to test it there? I wish I could say all trickled okay. here, but I think some maybe are too progressive, some are short-lived, but a lot do. Okay. I think, um, you know, I think what's so great about the APAC culture is so many of them are walking cultures for being in a bag industry and about 56% of our sales are done in backpacks you know, so really they're out on the street and it's, it, it's a main portion. Everything really starts with our backpack too. We design everything around a backpack and it funnels out mm -hmm. through all their categories. Um, so we do see that trend though right. falling. Mostly I would say yes, but not all. Okay. Yeah. And so how is Herschel's design team integrated into the company as a whole? Um, it's everywhere. I mean, that was our big goal was, well, you get one chance to set a company up and set a company up right. And, you know, in the past, you know, we had seen so many companies we were huge fans for, but when you get behind the curtains, maybe not everything was design driven in the way you want it to be. And our, our big goal was let's integrate design through the entire company, which, you know, still is today. You can see it. Our, you know, you come back into our, um, our office, it's more like an art studio. You know, I, uh, I put the kitchen in the middle so that, you know, communication and collaboration are some of the biggest things so that you um, really everyone sits open desks around each other so they can have that collaboration. I really think that you know, great design is gonna breed great design and so someone sees something gets to collaborate and bring a new idea over or expand an idea already there. Um, right into finance and legal where I know that sounds like, hey, how can you put design in there? But we could use stock invoices right off the bat, but for me it was when we're sending those in invoices out to our retailers, our wholesale partners, or our distributors, it had to be right. The logo had to be perfect. The mm -hmm. font had to be perfect. And, you know, that's right from, from our, you know, our graphic department, our art department, right into the product. Because we wanted every detail to be consistent and every hand tag to match every point from the e-commerce packaging you get, um, you know, saying thank you and, you know, for the order and, and trying to be polite or, you know, the box that comes in and, and really just trying to be consistent right from the start. So you'll see every single department and, and we scrutinize it from the way we do presentations to send internally or externally or Anyway, it was really design first, and design, design matters, and it matters to us, and it's, it's mattered in every single aspect of the business. Have there been any unexpected benefits to setting up your company that way? Unexpected benefits? Um, Sounds lots. Like said, no, yeah. I would say that my favorite thing about design is designers work in the future. Hmm. They're designing the future, and you know, I know everyone wants to own the crystal ball and figure it out, but um, one thing I push all the employees for, and, and and push myself for is constantly be looking through the windshield. Don't be looking in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when I say that, you wanna be driving the car. You wanna be running the race. You don't wanna be worried about who's behind you. And when I say that, I think because we're pushing your work in the future so much, there is unexpected um, 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 things that come. And I, I'm blown away by a talent of our team too all the time. Um, the nice thing about Herschel is we do everything in house. We almost set it up like a creative agency where we have photo studios, we have you know, videographers, we have an entire art department, marketing department. Um, that's our, you know, we have a workshop where we sew all our, our initial samples and really concept all our ideation and all our, our original ideas. So when we do it, we can do everything under our roof. It helps with speed to market, but it also helps with, uh, with our stories and how we're gonna bring those stories to life. It lets us be consistent. It lets us tell one story. So with having that creative agency, I think you know, we get so much unexpected uh, uh, talent back. Mm -hmm. And if there's another point on unexpected, I think, I'd probably say the one thing I do, which is probably different than a lot of people, is we really try to push all of our leaders to have small workshops. And so it doesn't matter if you're a designer that works in apparel or travel, if you work on accessories and headwear or bags, if you work in graphics, we'll pull workshops together and they can be a short time or a couple days. So a couple hours all the way to a couple days and we'll focus on one thing. So we may focus on the internal pocket on a jacket or the mm -hmm. internal pocket on a, on a travel case or um, do a color survey and, and, and story. And getting everyone in a different mindset and thinking differently and putting a bit of a time frame on it really allows for that, you know, I think out of the box thinking, mm -hmm. and, you know, really that designing the future. And mm -hmm. We get so many different you know, ideas coming back and even different point of views and how something twists till it actually comes to reality. It's pretty exciting. That you mentioned the internal, I feel like it's often the internal parts of the bag that really distinguish Herschel in its, um, 
how it's different in the yeah. market that those like beautiful fabrics inside that people didn't think about before was Sometimes. that there from day one it or? was the, that story on the liner is kind of a funny one it's a it's a, it's a pinstripe signature engineered mm -hmm. stripe liner in and the whole reason was my grandfather worked in the grain elevators in Herschel and he, every time you know we would show up he'd be in these blue and white um, um, engineered stripe um, overalls and it was one of those things again just paying homage the first season we put it in I didn't think it would stick around for 10 years but yeah. um, once you start something you know um, it stuck and, and people got to know it and yeah. I still love that nod to the past and to pay homage back to what it was and to talk about it and I think that it's part of our DNA now hmm. you see it everywhere so, yeah yeah um, what about, um, has the role of design in the company changed? I mean, you've been around since 2009, mm -hmm. 2010. Mm -hmm. Has the role of design changed in that time period at all? Completely. Yeah. I think what, what worked in 2009 won't work in 2019. And um, although we still run a fairly lean design team, and I think that's a really positive thing because it really allows designers to be engaged. It allows them to start from ideation right through to completion. It allows them to be involved and, and really own the projects and um, really be experts. And so I think that part, we've always run pretty lean design teams. It's growing over time. Mm -hmm. But um, I think you know the world's just moving so quickly that we've had to change the speed. The market's changing. The, the retail landscape is changing. Um, everything matters. And, and to me, it's just the way it worked in the past, although we've been pretty fortunate that, you know, I think five of our key silhouettes from day one are still our key silhouettes today. So there has been a lot of consistency through there, but, you know, really to bring on these new talented designers that just, they think differently mm -hmm. and um, they work so much quicker than, let me tell you, me on the computer, like back in 2009 is not what you guys want to see. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm hands off and we just have the, we have the most talented team. So I think it's really speed. And I think it's just, it's that mindset of just speed to market and how you're going to go and, you know, right. it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and you talked about back when the company was started, A, it was, and we talked about how it was in the heart of the recession. Yes. But B, Instagram didn't exist yeah. back and how that's changed over time too. Yeah, just socially and how you have to show up. I mean, this is going back 2009, um, we really went to market to, to sell. And for me, for me, we barely even have a website. It was one of those things we almost wanted people to have that sense of discovery. They had to go out and look. Now, this, it didn't last for long. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, Instagram wasn't around. It came, it came maybe the year after. And it, it was a great platform. Because one thing we really wanted to do when I talk about lookbooks and storytelling, we did a lot of our storytelling through photography. And we've been fortunate enough to have our, our, our same photographer um, with us since day one. And, Amazing. you know, he's, he's been a great friend. Got to probably date myself. But probably 25 years, he's been a fabulous friend, and he uh, he understudied under Andy Leibovitz in New York, and, wow. and 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 we're lucky enough to get to know him. And he moved back and, and started working for us, and he shot every single campaign since day one. So that mm -hmm. consistency and look and feel has really played a role in in helping you know us really pe get people to love our brand through design. Okay. So. Um, has there been a design driven project or initiative that you're really proud of? I mean. Design driven. I think the biggest one, if I had to talk on a personal level, I might go all the way back. We've been talking lots about 2009, but I'll just mm -hmm. a quick one on that is when we first set out to start Herschel, when you're going out to design a new brand and a, a uh, actually go and show it to the market, everything is scrutinized. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to talk about a trade show, the first trade show we did in New York. We did in the Chelsea Art Museum. And we had worked about eight months to get the product, almost a year to get the product right and ready and, and get the samples. And so Linda and I rolled into the Chelsea Art Museum. We had a 3 p.m. setup time, which was pretty late. The trade show was the next day. And we walked in. Every single trade show booth was set up except ours. And it had a broken footwear rack sitting in the middle of it. And we walked in with our samples and, you know, saw this broken shoe rack and footwear rack. And I said, well, this isn't going to work. And we tried to, tried to see if there's any way we could set bags up on it. And it just wasn't going to be possible. So we went over and talked to the shore organizers and, and asked them, hey, is there anything we can do? We're a bag company. We'd order some shelves. Is there any chance? They said, you know, there's nothing available. This is it. You know, you guys, you have about an hour to set up, so let's go. And we're looking at each other. Had put all this work on, had this big vision for this brand. We want to be global, and we want to go out and, and, uh, and, and, and truly design a better backpack. And, and so for us, 
it was one of those kind of aha moments where you're sitting around going, this is it. We have to either figure this thing out and build this booth, or we have to kind of turn around and walk out of here. And so looking around, I saw some wooden pallets sitting on the, on the ground. And we're talking about shipping wooden pallets, and some of the larger booths were probably brought in. We had a small 10 by 10. And I just kind of grabbed one and stood it up on end and walked up and grabbed another. And of course, Linda and I being brothers, you asked about working with family. Yeah. It's a little bit, it's easy to work with family because you can cut through all the kind of crap easy. You don't candy coat anything. <laughs> right. With that, with a brother, you know, you can go at each other for a second and two minutes later, you're best friends again. And so I think he kind of doubted it and we stood a few pallets up and, or I stood a few pallets up and I said, I think we can build a booth here. Give me a minute. I went and borrowed a, a drill and some screws and, um, we collected pallets and started breaking pallets and, and, and really starting to build this booth. And if, I don't think anybody really knows Lyndon in here, but Lyndon's probably the one that should be sitting here. He's the better speaker of the two. Um, I'm probably the better builder. But um, we had Lyndon in and out of the garbage and in and out of, uh, of uh, the, the recycling bins to get enough uh, uh, wood and pieces to build this booth. But it took us about four hours to build this entire booth. But I think the key of the booth, when we got it done, we had brought some assets, we had brought some photos and some props that we had, and all our bags were blowing up. Is, but we stood back um, from the booth, and, and um, I looked at him, and I said, oh my god, we're going to win booth of the year. This is the booth <laughs> of the show. And you guys laughed, because I think Lyndon laughed too, the exact answer. <laughs> and the point is, though, that um, we did win booth of the show. And huh? not really, they didn't give it away the award, but I gave it to us because <laughs> that, that show truly set the foundation of what this brand was built on. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things, it's using design to get out of a problem and really find that solution and the design-driven solution. Mm -hmm. And that booth, we sold some of our key accounts, all the best independent accounts at East Coast, all the best majors. We opened that season in North America. I mean, great accounts like uh, Nordstrom's or Urban Outfitters that have still been amazing partners from today walked into that show and just couldn't believe the setup we had and how great our booth looked. Of course, I'm in the background. <laughs> like this. But um, it, was, uh, it was one of those uh, one of those moments where we were pretty excited that, yeah. uh, I mean, even the press that came by, we were lucky enough to, to meet with uh, with GQ, who put us on the cover of their uh, their gift guide that year, and amazing. they put us in uh, in print that year. I mean, it was a pretty amazing show. And to think that there was a broken shoe rack yeah. in there, and we were on the point, like, do we just walk out and reschedule this six months later, or do we try to go for it? And it was fun to, to see there was a di design solution around it. Right, so, yeah. so cool. Yeah, pretty fun. Um, so I'm curious to know, you know, you guys are still in Vancouver, mm -hmm. um, originally from Saskatchewan, but it sounds like you followed your brother out here eventually. Yes. Um, there's a number of brands now, you know, big international brands like Arcteryx, like Herschel, um, Lululemon, that are based here. What's it like being based in the city? Is there any, is it what's helpful, what hinders, you know, sure. what keeps you here sure. now that you're in 90 countries? Why are you still in Vancouver? Sure. Well, first off, Vancouver's our home. Yeah. The brand was born here, and, and that was on purpose. It's the best city in the entire world. Uh, <laughs> yes, it really is. This city has, a, has, a, has an energy and um, you know, a, a, a real feeling around it, like none other I've been to, and, and surrounded by oceans and mountains. It has a perfect work-life balance. It is clean, it's international. For, for, for me personally, I mean, it's the lifestyle that I want all our employees to have, to be able to go out and enjoy the mountains and the ocean and still be able to go and get amazing food and, and still live in a city that has a heartbeat. Um, and easy to escape from that heartbeat and come back. Um, so I, I think as far as for us as a company, there's such talented schools here and design-driven schools here that we have amazing talent to pull from. There's, you said the brands there, I mean, Lululemon, Arteryx. I've been fortunate enough to speak at both those brands, and it's just, I am such a huge fan of what those guys are doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, for us, um, being our home, our biggest goal, and still is, is we were born in Gastown, and Gastown to me is the heartbeat of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. It, um, our first office was on Columbia and Powell, um, not too far from here, and our, our office currently is um, just a few blocks from that, and. I was mentioning you backstage, but the one thing we try to do is continue to get more space in that building and more space and more space. It's, it's hard to see the growth and plan for the future, but for me, I want to ensure that we don't have to move. I want to keep that heartbeat and keep that energy. We opened our first store uh, a year ago here in Gastown, 
and it was our first flagship. We wanted to make sure we opened it here, and we really wanted to pay homage to the city in the sense that the whole plan around the shop was to bring the city to the mountains. So we opened up the entire back of the store, and, uh, and you can really see the ocean and the mountains, and you know, it's right in the heartbeat of Gastown, right uh, a block from, from Gassy Jack. And, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, um, we love Vancouver. I think the hard part of Vancouver on some negative sides, especially for the youth, I mean, our average age, I think, is 29 right now, and it's, it's an expensive city to live in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities here, um, but um, that would definitely be the hard one, is it is expensive and it is hard to be able to live maybe the life we imagined yesterday, today, and so I think that is probably the biggest challenge um, as far as some of our youth goes, is, is right. just, you know, really finding living and, and finding it, you know, you don't have to drive too far and you still get to live in that culturally connected connected spot. Right. Yeah. Um, one last question, or maybe yeah. one last thing to talk about. Sure. You mentioned, uh, we talked about this backstage, uh, before you opened in Gastown, mm -hmm. you had your team build a lemonade mm -hmm. stand in Deep Cove, talking about a design challenge. Do you I want think, to talk a little bit about sure, that Sure, I, like? I didn't really talk about this one. This is, this is kind of one I was hated for around the office for a, <laughs> a couple of months, but it's one of those things I love challenging team, just like that workshop stand, yeah. and I love them to find design solutions for everything we can. And so we took our entire uh, uh, leadership together, and and that's, uh, that's legal, that's finance, that's retail team, that's our art department, that's our product department, you know, every aspect of it. And um, even the production and manufacturing side. And I, I, I live in Deep Cove, which if most of you maybe don't know, but it's, the, it's, it's across the bridge on the other side of, uh, of on North Vancouver. And it, you can drive as far as the road ends and you'll stop there, right below Mount Seymour. It's on the water. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. Don't ever go out there. Because it's already too busy, I'm kidding. But you guys should all go. It's unbelievable. And uh, I mean, Linda and I have a couple of retail stores out there, and there was an opportunity to take a small space. And you know, it's one of those things I hate saying no to an opportunity. And someone said, Do you want to take the space? And I said, Sure. And then Linda said, Oh, this is great. What are we going to do? And I said, Well, I don't know. What should we do? Because, well, I don't know. You took the lease. And so I thought, Well, I better think of something we're going to open in this store. And we were taking over the spot in two months. And so I said, You know what? I'm going to challenge the entire company on this one. So we went back to the company and Deep Cove is a, is a tourist spot where people come out and, and they truly want to buy you know, a quick item and, and walk around. So we thought, hey, what can we do? What is Deep Cove doesn't have? We're always trying to improve, improve you know, on what we can. So they didn't have a, a place to buy juice and, and lemonade. So we decided to open a lemonade stand. And so I pulled the entire team together. I said, guys, we're going to open our Herschel lemonade stand. And everyone's like, amazing. Do we even know how to make lemonade? And, <laughs> Of course not, no, <laughs> um, but I could see it. Um, and the next one was, we're going to do it in two months. And everyone in the room kind of got silent. And I know I was their least favorite, saying the word Jamie was probably a swear word in the office. You know? um, but to watch this team get together and the way it worked, and the way that we worked, that we had to get a hold of someone to build the lemonade, the way that the graphic and art department sat together and really put together the entire you know, not just to help with the, the graphics and the logos and, that, and, and, and the lemonade that wasn't made yet, but branding the lemonade and finding out what kind and, you know, the product team to dive in and have tote bags that really paid homage to Deep Cove and to get all the, uh, uh, um, the, the, the prints done and get the packable bags that were over there and to see the retail team work as quickly as they did to actually build this entire retail setup and, and a really design-driven one. And then to watch the marketing team go out and market it. I mean, these guys went to the extent that they bought a, uh, a mobile uh, cart. That there's, a, there's a hike out there called Quarry Rock. People that live in Vancouver may know it, but it's uh, maybe a 20-minute, 25-minute hike into this rocky point that overlooks uh, uh, the arm. And these guys decided to open Canada Day, which was the day before schedule, which I loved. <laughs> and they walked this cart right on the top of this cart. And the pictures that they had in marketing and gave away, I think it was Canada, Canada's 100th birthday. I'm going to get some correct. 150? What was it? Help yeah. me out. We gave away that many things. I'm absolutely terrible. I am born and raised in Canada, so terrible to say, but uh, I don't know those facts. But I, 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 we literally gave away that many lemonades at the top of this thing. And to watch the marketing department come together and the way this came, and uh, it, it was unbelievable. Yeah. So um, it was is pretty this, exciting is to see the challenge. Crate display, by the way? That could be the crate display. That's some Coke product we work with. We've been pretty fortunate to get with some amazing partners from Coke to, to Starbucks to, yeah. to, 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 to Disney to. You know, just so many um, amazing brands and amazing franchises we've been able to work with over the years. So, cool. yeah. OK, 
Okay, well, I think we're at the end of our time. So okay. a huge thank you to well, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.